Hey guys and welcome back to another PHP tutorial. So this video is just going to be a continuation of the last tutorial that I created which was basically validating a form. So in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and um, basically create a session page for the user and we're going to design the session page in the next tutorial. So first of all what you want to do is like always start your XAMPP service um, and uh, click on the Apache and SQL. And then what we want to do next is open our text editor and also the browser that you're going to be accessing your website through. If you guys haven't watched the first two tutorials, I really recommend you do. Otherwise, this wouldn't make sense because we in the first few tutorials, I showed how to create a login and register website and then also design it. So without further ado, let's begin. So this is the stage that we reached last time along with validation. So I'm going to log in quickly using a, I'm just going to register a quick account, test1, and then password is just going to be 1, register, test1, one, 1. Okay, so as you guys see right here, what happens when we log in is the information is transferred towards the um, link up here and it says username equals test1. But instead of saying welcome test1, it says welcome admin. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to transfer this information from up here to the page usually you'd use a session variable to do this but in this tutorial i'm just going to make it easy and show you how to use the get to get the information from the url bar so first of all what you want to do is go onto your session page and clear the welcome admin and then we're going to start a php script there and we're also going to end it down there so first of all, we're going to gather the username. So we're going to create a new variable called username and we're going to equals that to dollar get. And then we're going to say, so basically what this does is it gets anything that's already being posted through the URL bar up here. And then we need to tell it what we want to get. So we want to get username because that's what the, that's what it's called. And then we want to get the value of username. So we're just going to say get username and then we close that and then we're going to say for now echo username just to see if it works save that and quickly refresh and as you see right here guys instead of saying welcome admin it says test one so we've successfully gathered the username of the person logging in this is obviously going to change based on the person's username every time they log in so yeah that's how we do that and then we're going to design this a bit better so we're going to say echo um, Center H1 wages calculator dashboard and then close that as well. And so again, we're going to echo this out and we're going to say um, center. Let's just use the H3, I guess. Uh, header th it's which stands for header three. It's just going to be a bit smaller in size than the header one. And then in there, we're going to say, welcome um, username. And we refresh this page quickly. We have something that would look similar to a dashboard. Obviously, we haven't done the styling yet, but we can just copy and paste it over from our login and register if we've got one. So we just copy the H1 tag uh, from the style, copy that, create a new style tag up here after the heading. Uh, style oops and then I'm just gonna paste it right here and then we do the same we're gonna add comma h2 and as you see right here uh, the first one is obviously done but the second one hasn't for some reason or oh, obviously it's h3 so we do h3 but we can't do that because uh, if you guys notice, the font size is way too big. So we're going to have to do a separate one for H3, unfortunately. Create a new one. Uh, we can copy these over and we're just going to change the font size for the H3. So it's a bit smaller. Or we can just leave it on default by clearing it out. Save and refresh. And it looks pretty decent so far. We're just going to um, go ahead and add a borderline. So we're going to say... Um, first of all, we add a bit of padding, padding equals um, 15 pixels, refresh, and then we're going to do border, bottom, um, red, actually go solid, 
red uh, two pixels. And we have a clean looking interface which separates the obviously the upper websites from the information that's going to be displayed down here. So if we go ahead and go back and if we change the username to let's say something more realistic like um, user1 at gmail.com and password will be 123 register user1 at gmail.com123 login. And as you see right here, it, it's obviously changing the name based on the user that's logged in, which is perfect for now. So we have the basic information that we need from there. Um, if you wanted to, you could also collect other information from the user like their age, blah, 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 and then save that to the database and then retrieve their information through the database. So if we go on to the database, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, PHP my admin. If we go to POS, uh, actually it's the wrong one, uh, trial system, users, and then obviously in here we haven't got much apart from the username, password and their ID, but let's say for example we saved um, their age or let's say they had like a bio line that they would use or their wage that we're calculating later, we'd save it in a different table and then we could obviously retrieve that information and display it down here. Um, that's what I'm going to be showing you further on. So what we want to do next is create a new form. Actually, we're going to create different buttons that the user is going to be able to use. First of all, we create a login button so he can obviously go back. Um, we do that simply by typing in. We just create a new form basically. Um, form method equals post. We create one of the input tags, type equals um, submit, um, value will equal logout, and that's about it for now. So if you see right here, we have a logout button that's been created. So now we're just going to do a trigger function. So if it's a and we also need to give it a name. So name equals logout. So if it sets um, dollar post. So if this gets posted, which is logout, every time the button's pressed, obviously the logout thing's going to get posted. Then we want to redirect the user to the home page. So we're just going to use the meta tag that we used before. Um, we're just going to quickly copy and paste that. Echo this. Go here. Paste it there equiv content url session.php so instead of doing session.php all we have to do is change that to um, index.php refresh the page if okay so we have to add an else as well obviously so else um, echo none continue line 34 oh Obviously, we had to end, end the one before, so yeah. We click on logout now. It should have re redirected us to the login page, but for some reason it hasn't. Um, let's take a look. Index.php. I'm assuming I'm missing a... Yeah, there we go. So I was missing like a single quote there, which was causing the problem. So if you log in again, which was user1 at gmail.com, one, two, three. And if we click on the logout button, the user successfully logged out. Now, further ahead, we're going to allow the user to like um, go ahead with some of the functions on the website. So some of the different web, I'm just going to create a basic function to show you how to retrieve information from a database and display it. So for that, we're going to have to gather some user information. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Um, test one okay and then we create a new button down here that's really simple now we just copy and paste the same thing over and we change the values so I'm gonna call this one um, account details um, okay and then we call this 
details. Okay. So we're gonna refresh the page quickly and we have another button that says account details. So on this button, what's gonna happen is the user should be able to register his account details onto the website once he's created the account. And if the uh, account details already exist in the database, they use the obviously he wouldn't input them again, but he should be able to view them as well. Um, else if is it is post um, account details, then we move on to the next one, which is going to be a new form. So I'm just going to copy the form obviously again because I don't want to waste time. I'm just copy and paste that again, and then we go ahead and change this to text because we want a text entry value equals none because we don't need a value there and then name would be let's call this full name then we move on and i'm just going to copy and paste this one again because it's easier text and the name obviously we need a text holder or oh, actually it's called placeholder equals um phone name and then i just copy that and paste it down here so the next thing we're going to gather from the user is going to be their age and this it will change to age obviously then we copy this paste it over again and the last thing we're going to gather for now is the what we say the wage that the user is going to get paid so my basic idea about the system is basically like a wage calculator so the user should be able to calculate their wage just a concept so we can work on this website wage uh, per hour let's say for now okay and that's all and after that we're going to do a submit button and the value of the submit button is going to be finish and the name's going to be account details saved so as you guys can see right here if we refresh the page from scratch nothing shows up but when we click on the account details we have like a little form showing up for us that we, we have to input um, so now we have to go ahead in the database create a new table for this user obviously or we could um, still use the same table if we'd like to but it's always recommended to use a new table so we're going to um, call the table account details we're going to do full name uh, age actually this should go here id should go first always keep in mind full name um, age and then the the voyage obviously so I'm just going to keep that as is, this to text, this to text, text. And I'm going to do the auto increment for the first one. So we have an auto incremented ID for every record that's saved. Now we go ahead, click on save. And we have a new table where we're going to save all these details from the form. So once we've gathered all these details, we're going to carry on and go and create another else if for the is it. Oops. So if it's a dollar, if it's posting account details saved, then what we want to do is go ahead and gather all those details. So we're going to create new variables. So full name equals dollar post full name. So what this is going to do is whatever details are posted through this form, once the submit button is pressed, it's going to gather them and save them into these variables so we can later on go ahead and save them into the database. So we're going to gather the full name and age is obviously going to equal dollar posts age. And last one I'm just going to copy and paste because there's no point of typing again, wage. And then we just type in wage. Once that's done, we want to do a MySQL login. So we do MySQL connect. Um, we type in the, obviously we're on localhost. So we're going to type in localhost. We're logging in through the username root. And then we're going to leave this blank because I haven't set up a password yet. 
and then we're going to select the database mysql select database the database name is trial system okay then once that's done we're going to write our first query so mysql query um, first of all what we want to do is run a query to check if the user has already saved details into the database or not um, so how we're going to do that is or actually what we could simply do is let the user save the information only once and we can do an edit function in a later tutorial if you guys request that so we need to check if the username has already filled in this information obviously you should be allowed only once to fill in the information in the database or it's going to be redundant data which isn't a good thing so how we do that is we say select start from account details where username or actually where full name we have to so just remember we had to do another field in here so we're going to add another column for the username of the user username is going to be the username that's used to log in that's what we're going to use for reference purposes so we're going to save that quickly and we've amended another field in here called username so we're going to say select stuff from account details where username equals username so the username is obviously what we've gathered at the start right here we're just going to gather that again just in case the variable gets lost save that here okay and then we close that we're going to do this as a request and then we're going to call this result mysql.number of rows so what this does is it calculates the amount of rows based on the query and then request missing you there okay so if there is um any accounts based on any any rows in here based on this information on this query it's going to display how many rows of information match this um, criteria so if it's one then it's fine obviously if it's greater than one there shouldn't be so that's that should be what the concept is right here so we say if result is greater than one uh, then the user already obviously has the information saved so if it's greater than one we should just display the information to the user else we're gonna register this information so else we're just gonna write another query and then we're gonna say um, inserts into account details oops values the we're going to save the obviously first we're going to do a blank because that's for id then we're going to do the full name full name yep and we're going to do the age and we proceed on to the wage and then last but not the least the username and then once that's done, we just echo out a paragraph and say user details have been saved successfully. Okay. And here, instead of um, saying anything, we're just going to echo out a paragraph and say user details already exist. Um use edit button below to change details or actually we'll just say use delete button to record new details okay so if we now quickly go ahead and refresh this page and if we do go ahead and see here We're going to create a full name, which is going to be um, Jesus Johan Godino. 
we're going to type in an age, which is going to be like, well, let's say 22 for now. And wage is going to be £12 an hour. Finish. User details have been saved successfully. MySQL number rows and boolean is given. Okay. Select the half phone. Let's just see if it saved anything. Well, it has because obviously the rows might have been zero, but there's been an error here as well. So let's take a look at the error. Select star from account details where the username equals. Possibly because of the missing quotes. If we refresh. It's obviously saved twice now. Okay, that shouldn't really be happening. So if the result is greater than one, yeah, everything seems correct. I'm just gonna echo the result to see what it's actually displaying out. Okay. Oh, now it's working correctly. So let me let me just take a look. So if we delete these both, and uh, let's start again. I'm gonna register a new account. So type in full name. Uh, twelve finish user details have been saved successfully okay now we go back to account details and finish user details have been successfully saved again hmm. okay let's try using greater than zero instead and now we're going to go ahead and delete these Okay, now we go account details, register an account. Finish. User details are saved and then we go account details again. Okay, that's perfect. So obviously once it's saved, now it's not allowing us to save it anymore based on that username obviously. So if we go ahead and type in account details, type in finish, it says user details already exist, use delete button to create a new record. So now for the interesting part, um, we're going to display all the information from the database. So right here, we're going to display all the information. So we write a new query for another request. So request one equals MySQL query. Um, select star from um, we could actually just copy these this one because it's going to be the same query so we're just selecting all the every record that has the same username as the login session and then we're going to change it up here so instead of doing that we're going to do result actually the second line is going to be the same as well we need to gather how many rows exist so that we can do a loop for it and then loop it around to gather as much information as it exists and then result one will equal that we do result two as well equals mysql query select um it's not going to be query it's going to be mysql um fetch rows fetch array It's going to be MySQL fetch array and then the query that we're going to pass through for this is going to be request one so basically what this is going to do is it's going to fetch um, all the information that is available in this and it's going to save it into result two um, before that we need to start a loop um, and we're going to do in the loop is we do going to start a for loop and then we just change the values and we say is greater than result one so this loop is going to run as long as the i is equals the same amount as the rows that exist so inside the loop we have to paste result two so that it can update as it goes 
and then here we're going to display the information to the user as well so what we're going to do is um, echo full name and the way we're going to gather this is by using numbers to call out or see where the where the actual information can be referenced so we're going to do result to result to and then we're going to say full name is going to be saved at position one because the way we check this is we start from counting on zero so on position zero is id on position one is full name position two is age so position one is the result <coughs> i mean full name we're just going to refresh this and syntax error result two on line 65 okay let's fix that quickly Just put a dot in the middle. And as you guys see right here, it says full name, DSA, 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 which is the full name we obviously saved. Um, we can obviously just, if you want to make it easier and more formatable, just put it in here. Shouldn't matter anyway. And then we say up here, we're just going to do echo column details. save the count details and then we say that and then if we copy and paste the same thing over and over again we should be able to gather the rest of the results as well so after full name is the age so we're going to type in age then we're going to type in wage here we don't need the username the username for was for our reference purposes so yeah we're just going to update this to two and three because that's the um position in the array for the data that we're looking for if we refresh it says all the details that we need but the only problem here is it's not formatted so we just do paragraph paragraph uh, paragraph paragraph And that should do that for the formatting. And as you guys can see right here, if we clear this echo result thing, the one should disappear as well. Uh, it says saved account details, phone name DSA, whatever, age 21 and wage 12, same as the database. So that's how you would normally um, create an account. Obviously, we've learned that. And then that's how you would take further information from the user using like a mini form that we've used here. We could obviously design this better, but already this tutorial has been long enough. So I didn't want to make it more boring for you guys, which is why I kept it a bit more shorter by not designing it. And if we click on finish, we also have validation, which prevents the user from creating double entries um, into the database. And that's about it for today's tutorial, guys. Hope I was able to help you. I know this is really basic for you guys that already know about PHP, but this was really aimed for beginners, and I tried to keep it as easy as I could. Hopefully, I didn't confuse you guys. Um, obviously, you can leave me some feedback about this tutorial in the comments, and please let me know if you like a Python tutorial in the next video, or should I carry on with PHP? And I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.